on the island. Water. Snow melted. Rains fell. Ice broke. Rivers flowed. Water swirled. The world changed. Rumors fly. People who know but don't really telling tales, reporting info, detailing facts that are all not true but passed along again as if they were. And none of the tales are good. Gloom, doom, fears, making it worse than it really is when really is is already bad enough. And all the while, all around are men and women with uniforms and tired eyes from sleepless nights and long hours, risking, protecting, helping, guiding at the crossroads, at the floodwaters, at the sandbags, at the station, ready, always ready, always busy with their tired eyes and their lonely families. I look into eyes filled with fear, surviving today, not sure of tomorrow, a home across town, unseen for days, standing with others in a newly formed lake. What waits ahead? What remains? No one knows. The worst is feared. Then comes word, a glimmer of hope. It didn't reach one marker. Is that one alone? No one knows. No one says. No one knows, and not knowing is the hardest thing. <clears throat> People huddled, crowded, dazed. Children laughing and playing because that's what children do, trusting the parent to make sure they're safe, while the parent nearby stands in fear. What will happen to me, to my children, to my home? When will I learn what has happened so far? What are the paths that might be ahead? How will I get there? Where will I go? Sometimes the words spoken in a foreign tongue, sometimes not spoken at all, sometimes afraid others might overhear. Sometimes afraid the words will ring true in the ears of the one speaking, and that is all. But hoping the words are overheard by someone, while hoping they aren't overheard by the wrong someone. Crowds at the airport, crowds bagging sand, crowds standing and waiting for guidance and plans, crowds left like sheep without shepherd or guide, wanting to help, to make a difference, to do something, anything. Every little thing helps, every effort engaged with zeal, until someone official declares it doesn't fit the guidelines. Who's in charge? Who thinks they are in charge? Who demands to be in charge while people wait in line for food, for shelter, for help, forever? I've never seen anything like it, and I've lived here for years, repeated over and over by people as they express the shock, stunned by all around them. Others wait, they watch, they quietly add a touch, and they pray, because they know what many forget or choose to ignore. Prayer does matter. A church bell rings, people gather to worship, something to hold on to, something that is normal, something that brings hope. Something that endures when so much is changing and so much is at risk. Isolated. On an island. In a home. In a shelter. In a basement. For now. Others gibber nonsense. Worried about foolishness. Oblivious to the suffering next door. And those next door sit quietly. Invisibly. Watching. Waiting. Wondering if anyone will notice. Wondering if anyone really cares. Wondering. Worrying. Hoping. Despairing. Fearing. Invisibly. Hoping that if anyone does notice, that it will be the right people. But afraid that it might not be. And so it is better to remain invisible. Tears. Sobs, softly shaking heads, softly shaking shoulders, a hug, a held hand, 
a listening ear, a friend, a new friend, a lot of new friends. And they wait on the island that yesterday was not an island until the water melted, fell, broke, flowed, swept, rushed, flooded around the newly formed but temporary island. Someone finds a way to make the short trip out, which is no longer a short trip, but a major excursion, if you can find it, and if your car can handle it. Someone else finds a way in. Somewhere there is a road, a bridge, an escape, and a supply route. Something survives, but no one can go there. It is forbidden. It is unauthorized. It is unsafe. It isn't allowed. So they wait, and they watch, and they wonder, and they worry, and they ask when the routes will bring back those stranded away from us, worried about us, praying for us, missing us, and missed by us. Soon, we hope. All the while, for days on end, night and day, at all hours, whirring of choppers, buzzing of planes, chugging of boats, back and forth, taking someone somewhere or bringing them here, yet the town is strangely silent because the sound that isn't heard is a sound that has been heard for a century and a half, but not now, not here, not five times in the morning, not randomly through the day, not at all, even though that noise is the reason the town even exists, the noise of the train, blowing its horn, clicking its connections, roaring down the tracks with cargo and commerce and life, but not now, not here, not at all, except the dinging of the bells and the flashing of the lights from the cross arms on the street, oddly sounding out that today the tracks are heavy with water that melted, that fell, that broke, that swirled and flooded. Hope. Hope is offered. Supplies, freshly stocked shelves and receding water a little bit. Enough to open one road at least for now, at least to go check, at least to get a little closer to what stands in the flood, and then time to sleep or try for a few hours, troubled, uncomfortable, with the odd sounds echoing from the air as the planes and the choppers come and go, just like the sleep that eludes. And so you write a poem. Pictures appear on the lighted screen from the air of the water, so much water, from the roadways showing lakes that were never lakes before, and the remnants, collapsed roadways, crumbled asphalt, broken bridges, and suddenly you realize they are talking about us. Those pictures are here, those remnants of roadways, of bridges, of asphalt. That is why we are on an island, for now. Word comes, help is going to come. People at a distance, people unknown, people who have heard, people who have seen, because the news moguls finally decided that what happened here matters. But the help has to wait, because it is an island, for now. And the landscape keeps changing each day. And the plans keep changing each minute. Help is going to come, eventually. But it is okay, because help is already here. We have each other, and we are looking out for each other. Whether we know the name, whether we speak the language, whether we are in the same boat, we are on the same island. We aren't waiting. We don't have to. We have each other. Despite those who think that only they are the ones who count, the rest of us know we have each other. Whether or not it meets the guidelines of those who think that they are the ones who are in charge, it is we, we the people. We have each other and are doing our best for each other, even if we don't know the names or don't speak the language and aren't in the same boat, we remain together on the same island. It is a good island to be on with good people and good churches and open hearts and open pantries and open homes and open hands, and it is going to be okay. Not easy, but okay. Maybe not today, 
maybe not tomorrow, maybe not even in a year, but it is going to be okay because there are more good people on this island than people who don't care. And so tomorrow is bright, even if it means we have to wait. We will wait and work and hope and trust God through it, and it will be okay. This is Nebraska. Nebraska.